So, today, um, I get technically tomorrow, but today uh, we are finishing, marks the end of our, uh, our corporate 21 days of prayer and fasting, and uh, if you joined us in that, um, thank you. Um, our goal was that we start the, the new year off um, just with a desire to hear from the Lord, to uh, draw closer to Him, be more sensitive to Him and His desires for us. And so uh, we, we thought that would be a fantastic way to start off 2021. This morning we're going to do something just a little bit different, something that we will be doing more of in the future. Uh, but um, something that is a little bit different this morning, we're going to open things up and uh, and uh, have the opportunity to um, to testify to what God has done and is doing in and around us. So our expectation was that uh, that that we would uh, through this time of of intentional uh, reading of the Word, intentional prayer. Specifically for direction and uh, and uh, and then intentional uh, setting some things aside to help us be a little bit more sensitive to hearing from the Lord. Um, our our goal was uh, was to do that. Uh, the expectation was that God was going to move. Our uh, we went into this expecting God to move and God to speak. God to meet us and minister to us. And uh, we believe He did. We believe He spoke to us. We believe that He has, uh, he has spoken some things to us. He has done some things. And we want to uh, do this this morning. We want to uh, be encouraged by, be strengthened by, have our faith uh, bolstered, encouraged, uh, and give thanks for the ways that He has moved. And so we're going to do that. But before we do that, uh, in order to give uh, you all, hopefully you came, um, you came with some things to share. Hopefully you came with some things to encourage the body and edify the body with. Uh, but if you didn't, and your heart is kind of pounding in your chest, uh, and give you a second to gather your thoughts. Um, we're going to pray and then just uh, look, hopefully very briefly, at some things from Scripture. So Father, as we come before You this morning, um, grateful and uh, just in awe of the ways that You meet us where we are at. Thank You that uh, we don't have to have it all figured out. We don't have to have all of the answers, but we know that in You, all things are answered. Uh, you are the fullness of all things. And we thank You that we have the opportunity to come into Your presence as sons and daughters and that You desire to commune with us and, and, uh, and speak to us and guide us. And You're a good Father. You give good gifts. You desire uh, best for us. Your best for us. Father, when that looks differently than what we would have uh, thought, uh, I pray that we would still give thanks because Your will is being accomplished. We desire that this morning and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So why do we... I, I, I mentioned that we uh, were praying, um, expecting God to move. Why do we do that? Why do we go into times like this expecting God to move and God to respond? Is that safe emotionally? Is that, is that safe? Sometimes it feels, um, it feels vulnerable to do that because if you're anything like me, I think we've all been let down by people. We've all gone into something expecting or um, thinking that we may be able to 
depend on someone or have certain expectations going into something and we've been let down or it's looked differently, can feel kind of vulnerable and, and scary to ask, especially when we're, we're opening our heart and kind of pouring out our heart. It can be kind of scary and vulnerable to ask, expecting. Wouldn't it be safer just not to ask at all, not to expect at all, than to ask and be disappointed? James 1, 5-8. through 8. Now if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives to all graciously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For the doubter is like the surging sea driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. And this is why we go into these times of prayer expecting God to move, expecting God to speak to us because He tells us to ask without doubting. Without doubting. And Him being a good Abba, a good Father, He gives us according to His will. It says what? what how does He give? It says generously and un grudgingly now this is the key here i want you to i want you to notice the key I said according to his will according to his will that is key i can ask god for a new lamborghini <laughs> now if that is according to his will <laughs> then it's going to happen <laughs> if it's not and it's just me wanting a lamborghini and me being selfish or me desiring some sort of status and it doesn't line up with His will, then I can't necessarily ex expect that. But when I ask according to His will, this part is so key. When we ask according to His will, we will never be let down. We'll never be let down. When our will lines up with His will, we'll never be disappointed because His will will always be accomplished. And so the key, and I hope, that, I hope that as we went into this time, I hope that as we went through this time, hopefully we, we're being molded. We're being shaped into more of His image. Our desires are being shaped into more of His desires. Our will and the things that we ask for are being lined up with His will and His purposes. When our will lines up with His will, His will will always be accomplished and therefore what we ask will be accomplished. Isaiah 46.10 I declare from the end... I'm sorry, from, uh, from, from the end... Uh, I declare the end from the beginning... From long ago, what is not yet done, saying, My plan will take place, and I will do all of my will. Isaiah 14, 24. The Lord of armies. I love this. I love this. Uh, um, I think we can... Um, I think sometimes we, get, we have a... <laughs> especially with Jesus. Jeff and I talk about this a lot. Especially with Jesus, we kind of... Um, we create this uh, Jesus in our minds that is um, is just always uh, timid and and meek and gentle and loving, and all of those things are true. All of those things are true about Jesus, but if but if that's all, <laughs> then we are missing something. Okay? That's not all of who Jesus is. Jesus is a warrior. He's coming someday riding on a white horse with a sword in His hand and a tattoo on His thigh. Right? <laughs> he's, he's coming back someday as a warrior king. 
And, and it says, I dec- uh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, Isaiah f- uh, 14, 24. The Lord of armies has sworn. Oh, that creates in my mind something awesome that, uh, that, is, that is not something meek and timid. The Lord of armies has sworn, as I have purposed, so it will be. As I have planned, so it will happen. Proverbs 19.21 Many plans are in a person's heart, but the Lord's decree will prevail. This is why we pray according to God's will, because according, God's will will always be accomplished. Whenever we pray according to God's will, it will happen. And this should always be our desire, just as it was with Jesus. Again, the more time we spend with Jesus, like we talked about I think last week, the more time we spend with someone, the more we become like that person. The more time we spend with Jesus, hopefully, the more we are molded into the image of Christ. The more we take on those characteristics, the more we take on His desires and His thoughts and His actions. Jesus in the garden, He says, Not my will, but yours be done. He's surrendering what He wants. So it lines up with the will of the Father. And then when He he teaches us to pray, we talked about that last week. It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's teaching us as we pray, as we go into these times of prayer, as we go into His presence, our, our desire should be that Above all else. Now, that doesn't mean we don't present our requests. We do. But ultimately, our desire should be, God, all of, this, is what, this is what I want, but ultimately, I want my will to line up with Yours. I want my requests to line up with Your will. And so, if I am, if I am asking for something that doesn't line up with Your will, my ultimate goal is that Your will would be done. And so those things that don't line up with your will, pray that they would be set aside. Because I don't want my will to be in conflict with God's will. So as we pray boldly, as we pray confidently, as we pray boldly according to His will, and He answers, and He moves, and He speaks to us, it's important for us to speak those things out. It's important for us to testify to the ways that He's moved and the ways that He's answered for a few reasons. Number one, we communicate these things to celebrate to praise Him, to glorify Him, to thank Him. That's one of the reasons that it's important for us to communicate and to, to speak these things out. Okay? Psalm 107, 1 and 3. Sorry. Shh, phone. Or watch. Psalm 107, 1 through 3. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithfulness His faithful love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord stay quiet and keep it to yourself. Yeah? No. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim He has redeemed them from the power of the the foe and has gathered them from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Psalm 40, 9 and 10. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, O Lord, I have not hidden Your deliverance within my heart. I haven't kept it to myself. I haven't shut my mouth. I haven't kept it to myself. I have spoken of Your faithfulness and Your salvation. I have not concealed Your steadfast love and Your faithfulness from the great congregation. Psalm 43, He put a new song in my mouth. Now, did He give give you a new song just to keep it to yourself? Did He give you a new song just to keep it to yourself? He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Because of that, 
Many will see and fear, and they will trust the Lord. The new song in the heart is so that many will turn, many will trust, many will fear the Lord. The first thing is thanksgiving and praise and magnifying His name and being grateful. The second thing, second reason that we communicate this stuff is to remember and to pass these things on. To remember and pass these things on. Psalm 78, 2-8, I will declare wise sayings. I will speak mysteries from the past. Things that I have heard and known and that our ancestors have passed down to us. We will not hide them from their children, but we will tell a future generation the praiseworthy acts of the Lord. His might, these are the things, His praiseworthy acts, His might and the wonders he, wondrous works He's performed. He established a testimony in Jacob and set up a law in Israel which He commanded our ancestors to teach it to their children so that a future generation, children yet to be born, might know. And because we've communicated these things, they were to rise and tell their children so that they might put their confidence in the Lord. So that they might put their confidence in God and not forget God's works, but keep His commandments. Then they would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn, rebellious generation, a generation whose hearts was not loyal and whose spirits, whose spirit was not faithful to God. This is a, a reason that we communicate these things, the things that God has done in our life so that others will know and be able to celebrate with us. So that others will know and be able to put their trust in the Lord. When God does something in your life and you communicate that, what it does is it communicates to other people, wow, if God can do that for Lee, God can do that for me. If God met Lee, if God provided for Catherine, He can do that for me. Because He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Forever. He's the faithful one. He is unchanging. Mark 5, 18-20 As He was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged Him earnestly that He might remain with Him. Jesus did not let him, but told him, Go home to your people and report to them how much the Lord has done for you and how He has had mercy on you. So he went out. Okay? And look at this. You go, okay. Ah, but, but Jesus, I'm, ah, I'm, I'm more reserved. I don't like the spotlight. I have a hard time... You know conversations, and I, I'm not a public speaker, and and uh, and ah, uh, but but I'll leave that to the local rabbi, and and uh, and and all of these excuses that we come up with. Jesus tells him to go and report how much the Lord has done for you, and how He's had mercy on you. So he went out and proclaimed in the Decapolis how Jesus. How much Jesus had done for him. And this is what this is the result. It says, and they were all amazed. They were all amazed. Katie went to Israel and went to the spot where this took place. And they were talking about how this guy right here was probably the first missionary to the Gentiles. He went and he spoke to the Gentiles. The Decapolis is this area of ten cities. And it says, it says he, he, he proclaimed in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And it says they were all amazed. They were all amazed. He passed on what Jesus had done for him. He didn't keep it for himself. He passed it on. He spoke it. He proclaimed it. Number three, 
the reason that we speak these things, the reason that we testify to God's goodness, to encourage, edify, and strengthen each other. When someone speaks something that God has done for them, it's an encouragement to us. It bolsters our faith. Romans 10.17 So faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes through the message about Christ. When we proclaim what Jesus has done for us, it causes faith to sprout. Sometimes sprout for the first time. Sometimes it's uh, a remembering of, uh, ah, man, yeah, I've kind of gotten away from, from hearing and being encouraged by what God's done. So it's good to, it's good to hear. Okay? Hear people sp- speak. Psalm 66, 16 and 17. Come and listen, all who fear God, and I will tell what He has done for me. I cried out to Him with my mouth. And praise was on my tongue. Come listen and I will tell. There's an example. He's giving us an example of speaking and communicating. Revelation 12.11. We talked about this just briefly last week. And they conquered Him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. For they did not love their lives to the point of death. They did not love their lives to the point of death. They were willing to speak. They were willing to testify about Jesus Christ. Even if it meant their life. We aren't there yet here in the United States. Not that that we will never be in that position, but we're not there yet. But there are many brothers and sisters who are living this verse out right now. Speaking the name of Jesus, testifying to who Jesus is, could very well cost them their life. But that's part of what we do. It's part of what they conquered him. They conquered the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And so we want to give you all the opportunity. And I hope that we see it as that. I hope that I would love for us to get to the point where ah, every month we have an opportunity to speak what God's doing in and around us. And that that time would just be encouraging. Because you can kind of... We can kind of get to the point where we go, ah, you know, maybe maybe we're going through a, a little bit of a time and what somebody shares with us about what God's doing in their life or around them pulls us up out of that, encourages us up out of that. So we want to we want to take a, a little bit of time here and um, and give you the opportunity to so uh, to to speak about what God has maybe spoken to you, maybe uh, done in or around you, where you have seen God moving over these last three weeks or since the beginning of the year. And we want to we want to testify what what a good what a good testimony is is it's short and to the point and it brags on Jesus okay short and to the point and it brags on Jesus and so that's what we want to do so so uh, so Jeff and and Katie are going to be walking around with microphones um, we would love uh, I I know some of you may not like microphones and may not like speaking but. We can encourage one another when we do. And we also, there are more of us that are part of this body than are in this room. Okay, There are some of those who are watching online. And, and in order for, for those people to be encouraged, we want to speak those things into the microphone so that they can hear. So that they can, uh, they can join with us in celebrating what God has done uh, in, in your life. So, 
Katie and Jeff are going to be uh, here available. If you, if you have something, please just raise your hand and, and we'll get to you as soon as, uh, as, soon as we can. I'm going to stay right here um, so that everyone on, on, uh, on, online can uh, have something beautiful to look at. But, um, <clears throat> so, uh, I don't know why you all laughed. <laughs> that hurt my feelings. Um, the, uh, but I, I'm just going to uh, maybe, maybe give a quick... Uh, summary of what you said, okay? But uh, just remembering, uh, short to the point and bragging on Jesus, what God has done. So I've got a few things here that others uh, have, have sent me, and so as, as we go along, maybe I'll read some of those things, but uh, we're testifying to what God has done or spoken to us um, over these last three weeks. Well, it seems like for the last three weeks during this fast. And Adam, I'm grateful that you uh, mentioned at the onset that we didn't have to fast from food. Uh, we could fast from something else. Um, since September, I've been a uh, the office addict. And so I thought that was the most logical thing to, to give up. Um, but it seems like the last few weeks, um, God has shown me that my my faith in him is flagging and that I need to I needed to establish it on the truths of his word instead of my thoughts and feelings that go to and fro like Ephesians says um, but one another thing too is that um, I was encouraged to have a, a session before the Lord I, just, I got down on, and I don't want to make this about me. You know, like you said, I want to make this about what God is doing. And I got down on the floor and just poured my heart out before the Lord. And what I did not realize was that I was very sorrowfully angry with him for um, the fact that my wife died. But I also discovered that God is big enough to handle my emotions. You know, I'm, like you said, I'm, I'm reserved and you know, almost to the point of stoicism. I do have feelings, I assure you that. Um, and while I, uh, while I poured out my emotion, I didn't, I didn't resolve that in the truth. It was last night that I resolved it in the truth because I was afraid that I'd be angry with him for the rest of my life. Fortunately, the Lord uh, brought me to a site where I could resolve uh, a site on the web where I could resolve these things, and I chose I chose with all I had to assign blame where it belonged, uh, Satan, and the Lord brought an immediate peace. I was so relieved, and I, I slept well last night. This this happened last night, almost 12 hours ago. So I think that's all I have for now. Praise God. That's a huge answer to prayer. That's a huge answer to prayer. And God met you. That's, and like I said, God, uh, God just wants us to come to Him. He wants us to come to Him regardless of the state that we're in. He wants us to come to Him. And even that's, if that's with anger or uh, resentment or these types of things, the presence of God is where we need to run for those. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. It's a safe place. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, someone in my family has been healed, but I cannot share that information because I don't have their approval. But uh, just to be told that I'm healed... This is what my problem was before. I prayed to the Lord, and now I'm healed. Is is uh, oh such a testimony to them, mm -hmm. and so I'm just so thankful for that. Uh, my daughter and her husband in Maryland. Truly, the Lord has been speaking to them, telling them things that uh, are coming, and and the peace that they have. They've shared things with me, and uh, I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. What's coming is going to be good. Mm -hmm. And they, Carrie has a friend that has become a Christian, and she was baptized. When she came out of the water, 
She said the Lord told her to take her hands and place them on the person who was standing beside her, which she did. The other person put their hands on top of hers. And when she took her hands down, the person said, I can see, I can see my corneas. I have new corneas, I can see. Uh, they also told me that there's going to be much healing in this land right now. Mm -hmm. I uh, have not um, been fasting, but I have been uh, becoming closer to the Lord. I believe what he says. Things are coming. As uh, the current president said, it's going to be a dark winter. It's going to be a dark winter, but joy will be coming when, when the Lord is ready. Yeah, you know we have, we have, uh, we have hope in what uh, in what He has planned, and uh, and whatever He has planned, uh, we are going to we're going to rejoice, right? We're going to be glad uh, because it is always for His glory and for our good, right? Uh, Lord, speak to me. Oh, um, I was. Praying for the Lord between both. Um, uh, praying for the Lord. So, Joe's walking without a cane. Yeah. Yeah, Joe's walking without a cane. That's, and Caleb was praying for that, and that's what. That's what's happened. Yep. Joe, Joe, uh, Joe walked into church this morning, Heather said, uh, without his cane. So that is a huge answer to prayer. For many of you know, uh, Joe's had some serious knee issues and um, back and forth and been in a cane and a walker and, and all these things for a long time. Two years? Yeah, two years. And so uh, that was a huge answer to prayer to, for Joe to be able to walk without his cane. Yeah. All right. In Luke chapter 6, we have, But I say to you who hear, and this is Jesus speaking, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful even as your Father is merciful. And um, I went to this a couple of times to try to help my children. And in the midst of that, uh, I really got stuck on verse 31. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. And God was very gentle in revealing to me how far short I fall of that. And uh, it was helpful for me to consider how would I really like to be treated by others. And as I considered that, I realized that I don't do some of those key things, just simply. And uh, it, was a, it was a sweet time. And uh, I look forward to seeing how, how God might continue to use uh, this wonderful little bit of scripture in my life and in my family's. Uh, journey together, and that's all I have to say about that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, ooh, sorry. <laughs> so me, Priscilla, and another student of ours with crew um, named Eileen went sharing one day and we met a girl named, L no, maybe I shouldn't say her name, it's fine. Um, and said girl did not know Jesus, um, but she was really eager and she was, um, she wanted to know Jesus, but she said, I don't think I'm qualified. And those words broke my heart and I almost started crying right on the spot and I told her those things. Um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty rampant on the college campus. People don't think that they're good enough. Um, and we explained to her how <laughs> none of us are, uh, but because of the grace of God, he wants each, a relationship with each and every one of us. And so we walked her through what it, like a prayer to receive Christ, and she prayed in that moment out loud. And um, with the group of us, she became a believer, and it was a huge um, Blessing coming from a, a campus that's very closed, um, not a whole lot of activity right now, or freshmen just don't know of the activity that's going on. And so it was really an encouragement to watch this new sister become a believer. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's fantastic. Praise God. He's still working, right? <laughs> Even in the midst of the craziness and shutdown and all this stuff, uh, we're we're grateful for... Haley and Jeff and, and Priscilla and, and all those in, in crew working and um, still pursuing um, our students at, at Central. and um, Fantastic. We've got a new sister in, in Christ, right? And the other thing uh, I'll mention too, that uh, was one of the things that happened in our household over these last 21 days. I've been praying for Isaiah specifically and his understanding of, uh, of who Jesus is. Uh, understanding of the gospel, and uh, and he he prayed the other day to uh, to accept Jesus as well. So that was a huge answer to prayer and um, something very cool uh, in our family uh, during this time of of fasting. So and praying. So yeah, a uh, long time uh, friend of uh, of ours from. Uh, when we lived down in Lansing, he's uh, struggled with uh, some some health issues for a long time, and uh, as it, it, this last year, they like really came to a head in 2020, and he uh, it really broke him down, and uh, he he was struggling, you know, mentally and emotionally and spiritually towards the end of 2020, and at uh, in, around Christmas time, he was admitted to a hospital um, uh, with a, a intent to kill himself um he was he was very low there was a lot of uh a lot of prayer and a lot of support of his family that we uh that that we were connected with and we you know tried to you know do what we could for that but by the grace of god now just at the end of the first month in he's you know come out of that christ saved him from that he did not harm himself he's with his family again and he uh, and he's physically on the mend now too. Finally, after many years of dealing with this, a bunch of things came together, and he's uh, and he's uh, he's been he's been healed, and he's continuing to heal. So definitely a time of thanksgiving for them. Amen. Yeah. Um. Pastor Dan, uh, not feeling well, so he is not here this morning, but he passed something on uh, that uh, answered a, to prayer during this time. He said, uh, God's answered our prayers concerning Matthew's speech. Many of you, if, if you've been here for any period of time, you know Matthew, and uh, uh, it says he has communicated more in these last two weeks than in the last five years combined. About four days ago, he told us that he loved us, and that's it's so much better than the nod and the smile that that uh, is sometimes given. He was able to articulate that, and uh, as a huge answer to prayer, they say we are on cloud nine. So that's a huge answer to prayer with uh, with prayers for Matthew and and being able to articulate and communicate the things that uh, that that he uh, he wants to communicate. So. Well, I think I shared before that uh, um, 
this time of prayer and fasting has kind of set a new challenge for Linda and I, and uh, uh, we want to continue after this um, listening to the Word. We use the U version on our phone, listen to the Word uh, while we exercise together, which is uh, another uh, um, challenge that um, we needed to do and uh, so it initiated that but we can listen to the word like uh, whatever the assigned word was for the day um, we can listen to it like three and four times um, while we're exercising or eating uh, dinner together so we want to keep doing that but what what I felt like God was speaking to me was to be a better listener uh, to people uh, out of James 1 19 you know talking about being quick to listen and slow to speak and uh, many times can be thinking about what we're going to speak before we really listen uh, to someone at least in my uh, my world and um, also to listen to God better uh, listen to God himself and listen to his word uh, and really ask for revelation ask God, will you show me something while I'm listening to or reading the word? Will you show me something? Um, ask and, and you'll receive, you know. And if you don't ask, you, you may not receive. And so just reiterating that to me that I need to ask him for, to show me what somebody is saying or what he's saying or what the word is saying. Um, so that's the basis of it. Good. Good encouragement for all of us, right? <clears throat> I'll stand up. How's that? Um, uh, a, little, a little bit ago, a saying kind of came into my mind, and I'm not sure where this saying came from. And it's, uh, it's not in the Bible, but it says, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And... Uh, you know, we have gone through a pretty tough 2020 in a lot of a lot of ways, and 21 could be could be similar or could get worse. We don't know, but when the going gets tough, the tough get going, and it kind of in tough times it kind of unites people. I think you know people who have a heart for the Lord get united. Like I think about back in the the book of Acts. Um, when um, uh, they were going through some tough times. How did they, how did they handle it? The Lord had been killed and they were persecuted. And how did they, how did they handle it? Well, um, in Acts 2.42, it says they, they, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread and the prayer and the fellowship. And, uh, and then a little bit later on, it, uh, it says, uh, it talked about how united they were uh, together in, in tough situations they, they kind of unite then the Holy Spirit can work then you see things happening when that happens and I've got two things I want to share uh, praises uh, that uh, I want to share and uh, hopefully you guys uh, either are participating in this or have an opportunity to participate yet is that uh, we have a Monday night prayer meeting Last Monday night was a fantastic prayer meeting. I was super blessed by it. People came out, I think, that we had, had never seen at a prayer meeting. And, uh, you know, hearts are being moved, and, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to come together. Things will not change. Nothing will happen unless we pray. And uh, so I encourage you all to think about maybe tomorrow night, right? Tomorrow night, coming out and joining the prayer meeting, uh, even if you just come to listen. You know, uh, big, good things good things happen from that. <clears throat> good things always happen from prayer. Then another praise that I have is uh, um, I've been trying to organize a foundations class uh, for the last year. I've had a sign-up sheet out there, and uh, you know I've talked to a few people, and it just doesn't seem like it was uh, it was happening. And and I want it to be something. Uh, you know, I've twisted a few arms over the years for people, you know, why don't you, Catherine, why don't you join the foundations class, for example. And uh, so anyway, I said, well, we'll just let it go. And when God moves people's hearts to, to join, it'll, it'll work. Well, um, right at the Christmas time, I think, the, the May family said they wanted to take foundations. And I says, great, we've got two people signed up. 
for the class. And then another couple signed up, and then another couple, and another couple. So I had, our first meeting was last Sunday night, and we had 21 people uh, signed up and um, listening and participating in the class. People showed up I didn't even know were coming. And fortunately, we have a lot of books. It's not too late to join, by the way. Um, so anyway, that's a super blessing to me, and it shows that people are uniting. It shows that people are uh, uh, putting God first as a priority in their life, and uh, it's just a huge blessing, and um, I want everybody to, to know about that, that things are happening, guys, and uh, hopefully you can physically participate or, or be praying for these things. So thank you. Yeah, um, if you're interested in that foundations class, like Steve said, it's not too late to, to sign up, but talk to Steve or to, to join, talk to Steve. Uh, our prayer, uh, we've been, during these 21 days, we've been meeting every, uh, every Monday at 7 o'clock. Uh, usually we meet the first Monday of the month, but, uh, but during this time we've been meeting every Monday and it's been very, very good. So if you are interested in that, we will be meeting tomorrow. And then after tomorrow, it will it will be the first Monday of every month again. So, um, join us there. It, very good time. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. I have another one here uh, from uh, a teenager. Said, over the last twenty one days of fasting, I fasted from dessert. Whew. Brave. During this time, God taught me about discipline and to obey Him. When I was tempted by donuts, I went to God for help. That's, that's fantastic. They went, that was a trigger. That was a trigger for this young lady uh, uh, desiring something, and that triggered going to the Lord, right? And that takes discipline. So that's fantastic. And, and our prayer is that that's, that's exactly it. Our prayer is that, that we're always... We always have things in our lives that, that trigger us or, 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 or force us, drive us to, uh, to Him and dependence on Him. And that takes discipline, that takes practice, that takes um, courage. And uh, so that's fantastic. Praying that, that that attitude, that heart, even if the desserts come back, there's still things that drive us, drive us to Him. So, cool. So um, there's two things I've been praying for to happen at work since 2018. And they were probably looking back idols because I was just like, oh, God, this would be so cool if this happened. And I felt like he was inviting me in 2021 to trust deeper, to, you know, do less and let him do more. And um, had surrendered those things of like, you know what, it's okay. You know, if this event, never asked me to speak. I'm still a speaker. I'm still supposed to do that. And God is not a magic genie or a Santa Claus, but both of those things happened over the fast. And it's interesting because I'm excited about them, but I don't have the same like, yes, this has to happen. And it's a thing where it's like, I have to give God credit because it was nothing I did. And I just want to encourage people if sometimes we try to make things happen, and they can be good things, but just a challenge is to kind of just sit back to watch and see, because when God does it, first of all, it's confirmation it's supposed to happen, right? That it's his will, but it's just that peace that comes when we are following him versus kind of trying to drag him along. Yeah, when we surrender those things, right? Yeah, that's what, that's what uh, Katie said. She said, she call, or t- called me or texted me, I don't remember, but she just said, you know, this place asked me to be the keynote speaker and that's something that she's she's been desiring for a long time uh, and just would would love to do that and she said it's funny just the other day i finally surrendered that i finally not gave up on that that desire but surrendered it to the lord and she said i finally did that and he did it (laughs) you know and so when we surrender those things uh, again not my will, but yours be done. Sometimes he gives us the things that we desire when we surrender those things, right? Yeah. You can kind of piggyback off of the work thing. It's been a different season of life for us for the past year or so uh, because my husband's a musician and 
a lot of that work has shut down, but God has provided an opportunity for me to be a ship shopper. And this has gone on longer than the past 21 days, but I'll explain why this is kind of key to this. Um, so that he's taken on a lot of the teaching, and I've worked three or four days a week uh, in the morning times, in the late afternoon, and um, it's kind of a competitive area. A ship shopping, it's the way that you're offered jobs, you're not guaranteed work. It's offered based on how many jobs are out there, who wants you to be their you know, shopper, and your ratings. A lot of things that I don't have control over. I can just put myself on the schedule and trust God. <laughs> so that's what we've been doing. Um, and it, it's been busy because of the pandemic and the holidays. But this past two or three weeks, it's really slowed down. And um, I've just been so thankful, and I've seen more over the past three weeks God providing. I've known that God's provided this for us because it wasn't an opportunity I sought out, but there has not been one hour the entire time I've been shopping that I put myself on the schedule that we have not had a job offer for that hour, like the entire time. And that's not something that I can make happen or search out, so I've just been praising God, especially these last couple of weeks when it's been slow because there have been people who haven't had any offers and we've just been thankful for everything that's come our way so we've seen god provide in that very cool so this uh this last week i've been focusing on trying to pray and um my wife and I pray a passage out of Ephesians in the morning. Sometimes we pray Ephesians 6, and it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Sometimes as I'm driving around, I'll, I'll use different things that the Lord might bring somebody's name to my remembrance. I'll see a car that's the same make and color as one of you all, and I'll think, oh, I'll think about that person. I think, well, I'll lift them up in prayer in that moment. And sometimes as you're going through the day, I find myself uh, wondering, God, are you hearing this prayer? And is that person being touched by you? And God brought back a situation to me. Back in 2001, we had prayed for um, Gracia and Martin Burnham. I don't know if you remember, they're New Tribes missionaries. They were captured by a a group of Muslims and um, taken through the jungle for a year. And we spent some time praying for them. I think maybe even as a congregation, we may have spent some time praying for them. A lot of Christians in America have spent some time praying for them. And, and I've had this experience uh, over different years where I would pray for something and then God would bring them into crossing my path. And it was kind of an odd thing. I would notice it again and again. And I think God was trying to deal with some weakness of faith in me. And so this week, uh, I, I remembered a situation where I had been at a conference and she ended up sitting by me in one of the um, evening sessions. And I looked back on it this week and I thought, you know what, I think God was again reminding me that when I pray for people, he hears it and he sees it and he's touching them. And she, in a, in a radio broadcast this week, this was brought back to me, she said she was in the midst of the jungle, and there were bullets flying everywhere. The government forces were trying to take out their captors, and her husband was shot, and she was shot in that situation. But the thought came to her that people were praying for her at that moment. And, uh, you know, in that passage, it says that it's not just a uh, spiritual force. It's a host of wickedness that we do battle with. And as you lift up prayers for each other, we're not alone. That God has given us to each other uh, to provide protection and uh, through Him, through His power, uh, through prayer. And so I was just encouraged in that in that moment, knowing that God was not only hearing uh, my prayers uh, for many of you in the congregation, but that He was in the process of touching you. This year, of course, I love Christmas, but I this year I have put lights in every window of the living room and dining room, and to me that is Jesus is the light of the world. So I just uh, that's that's what it means to me. Those lights there that we are in a dark time, 
but Jesus is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that Jesus that's inside of us then allows us the opportunity to be a city on a hill, right? A city on a hill that can be seen, a light from that city be seen from a long ways away when, it, when it's up on a hill, displayed, right? Um, I work as the receptionist for the Strickler Center, which is where the care store and the food pantry and the infancy pantry and clothing ink and all of those are out of that building. And the, right now the building's been closed, um, but I prayed that I would be able to touch people even though they're not able to come in. Every other week I have to call um, everybody that's on our bus list to get a box of food. And so many times those phone calls last, it takes me two days to do the list of phone calls because those people are asking for prayer for one thing or another. Um, and so it's just been a blessing to be able to connect with those people in that way. So, Yeah, still being able to minister. And that, that's one of the things that, that I think... Um, we uh, Central Church, um, and, and it's not exclusive to us, but this this time, 2020, has really uh, has really caused us to rethink some of the ways that we do things. Right? Rethink the way that we uh, that we do things, and one of the th one of the biggest things that uh, that that I think uh, we've come away with is how do we minister to people um, when sometimes we can't. Uh, physically be there. And, uh, and that's fantastic how they're still being able to minister to um, the people on that call list who are some of the most needy of us, right? Still being able to minister and God's giving you the opportunity to, to, it sounds like, pray for them and, uh, and hear them and listen. And uh, that's a fantastic thing to still be able to minister to those people even if when the building is closed, right? Awesome. I am not a lefty. Um, so I went into my um, days of fasting. I'm still in the middle of it. so. Um, but I went into it wanting to learn about one thing, and God was like, yeah, no, we're going to do something different. So um, what I have been learning a lot about is God as a father um, because I no longer have my dad. And... I love him very much, and I still miss him, but he was not always a good dad at all. Um, and what I have been learning about is there is one who is a good father. And the love is unconditional, and it is so deep, and it knows no bounds. And it's been really encouraging to find that because I didn't know how much I was missing that. Amen, right? We as earthly fathers have flaws and as much as we try to do things right all the time or uh, we fail miserably many times and there's grace in that and our prayers that all of our children in spite of our failures as a father in spite of our failures as a parent find exactly what what God's been doing in Sam's life and in, in her heart is showing her who he is as a father and uh, the depth and the awesomeness that is God our father so I pray that, Sam, that that continues and that all of us, not just our children, but all of us, discover a little bit more about who God as our Father is. And that changes us as His children, right? Thank you. Maybe one or two more.
if you are if you are at home and you're you're watching this uh, online, fantastic! Just to type your testimony out, share that uh, in the comments on the Facebook page, and we'd love to celebrate with you. Be encouraged by what uh, what God did in your life too. Just because you're not here physically doesn't mean you can't participate and and uh, encourage us. Amen. One or two more. If there aren't any, then we will move on. So. I've been um, praying a lot just for each day as it comes, um, and I've seen God answer my prayers in like a million small ways throughout this month, um, and take a long time to recount like <laughs> all the individual things, but a trend I've seen is, is my prayers that he would help me to develop my, my skills for the calling that he has for me right now, like the tasks he's set before me. Um, and this time have been answered. He keeps um, putting people in my path who have um, experience in what I'm doing and um, insight into, you know, the the vision that he's given me, you know, his calling for me, and um, just a lot of good counsel on how to go about that, how to care for people well, how to, um, you know, take on these tasks intentionally and with a, a godly mindset, you know, um, directing me towards scripture that speaks into the things I'm trying to accomplish. Um, and so that's been a huge blessing. And then also looking towards the future, wanting to work overseas. And he's opened up opportunities for me to do um, video calls with people who have been in the area that I'm headed to, um, been there for 10, 13 years doing the sort of work that I'm looking at doing. And uh, so it's been, it's been wonderful getting to hear their insight and how God's taught them and learned from their wisdom. And he's just arranged those meetings so well, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, lots of answer to prayer as far as preparation goes and that kind of thing. Cool. We celebrate with you. Because those are answers to our prayers as well <laughs> for you. If your heart's pounding in your chest, now's the time. I have a few things, uh, just four things that I felt like the Lord spoke to me, not only for uh, my family, but for, uh, for, for this family as well. Uh, four words. The first one is discernment. Discernment. That we would be a people that discern... Uh, have a spirit, the spirit of discernment, uh, and that is the Holy Spirit uh, filtering, and and uh, that we would we would have uh, discernment because there are a lot of teachings out there that are not biblical. They're not true. They're false, and they are very dangerous. And we see many Christians. We see many churches being pulled in directions. And, and many times it's just one thing, one small thing, one little thing. Um, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, we're off track. And felt like the Lord uh, would want us to be discerning in the things that we allow into our lives spiritually. Uh, there are wolves out there scripture talks about wolves in uh, in sheep's clothing and and that is many of the teachings that we uh, that we're seeing infiltrate the church they sound good <laughs> they sound like something that Jesus would approve of they sound like that is something that we as followers of Jesus should be doing should be and uh lies and deception that we would discern and be and be grounded on the foundation the truth of God's word 
and that we would bend our lives to line up with it as opposed to bending it to line up with the way that we want to live. And, uh, and so that first word I, th- I feel like the Lord gave us was discernment. The second one was boldness. We're doing that right now. Boldness in speaking and communicating what He is telling us what, uh, about His goodness, His faithfulness, His holiness, that we would speak that stuff clearly and confidently and often. And that we would speak the gospel with that same boldness, with clarity and with confidence. And that we would speak the gospel, communicate the gospel often. Um, The third word is holiness. Be holy as I am holy hasn't changed. That command, that mandate hasn't changed. It is still uh, as true today, if not, if not more true, than it was when the Lord spoke it the first time. He said, be holy as I am holy, and that is vitally important today. Vitally important that we would put aside the temporary things, temporary pleasures, in view of eternity holiness that we would be a people God is Jesus is coming back for his bride one day and we want to be pure and spotless when he returns and that means that we need to put away some of the things that some of the spots that we have the fourth word was courage do not be afraid that we would fight for each other instead of against each other. Be strong and courageous, for I am with you. And that in that courage, we would take back territory, we would take back land that the enemy has stolen from us spiritually, and that we would take new ground, that we would go farther into the land than those that came before us. It takes courage. It's going to take courage. But I felt like those were four words that God would give us as Central Church as we move into 2020 and beyond. That those things, that we would be people of discernment. That we would be bold. That we would be holy. And that we would have courage. Because, not because of anything that we are, but because He goes with us. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And that should give us courage. Amen? Amen. Last chance. Not dwell on myself, but to you know, listen to them and see what, you know, what they're doing in their lives. And I, I, would, I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Yeah. We don't... Thank God we don't have to do this on our own. Amen? Thank God that, that uh, that's, what this, that's what the local body is. is uh, part of our purpose is to is to be united, to be able to stand with those, bear one another's burdens. We all have burdens. Uh, they may not be as... Um, no, they're all different. Not that, not that any is, is heavier necessarily than the other, but they're all different. We all carry burdens. When you're alone, you carry that alone, and that's, that's, uh, that's one of the beauties of, of the church is uh, you have people who love you and care for you and will come alongside and um, lighten the load, right? Okay. If you didn't, uh, if you didn't, didn't communicate, uh, which is totally fine, 
if you didn't communicate something and you would like to, we want to we want to still have an avenue for that. And so uh, on the back table there are there are uh, just little half sheets of paper. They're really simple. They have a verse about uh, proclaiming God's goodness, and and then it's just blank. So if you have something that uh, that you want to communicate to us help to encourage the body or, or celebrate what God's done or to pass on His goodness, uh, that, that's always going to be an avenue for you. And then we're going to try to do this once a month, not necessarily, uh, in, not, not necessarily um, during the, uh, the, the, the teaching time, but maybe during the special uh, time, the last Sunday of every month. And so you will have an opportunity and outlet to continue to, uh, we'll have that opportunity to continue to encourage each other. Um, and so if you didn't speak something, that opportunity is, is, is still there and we want to make that available because it just, it benefits all of us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. F- gather, uh, gather, Father, God, Father, <laughs> we thank you for meeting us and, and speaking to us. The, the, that fact is, is awesome in and of itself and uh, working in our lives in, in ways that can only be described or defined as miraculous, supernatural God meeting or communicating, communing with humanity. The awesomeness of that fact Thank you for lead, leading us into and through this time over the last three weeks. Thank you for fulfilling your promises that if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. And, and uh, we see that you have done that. I pray that as we continue to do that, you will continue to draw nearer to us. Give us the desire, the determination, the... Uh, the hunger and thirst to continue to draw close to You. Holy Spirit, we pray that the habits that have been developed, the habits that we have uh, established here over these last three weeks, that uh, they would stick. That they would never... uh, That we would never move away from those habits. That we wouldn't fall out of those habits, but those habits would just deepen and increase our, our, our desire to spend time with You, intentional time in Your Word, intentional time praying with You, intentional time setting aside things that uh, maybe are uh, too important to us in order for us to be able to focus more clearly, uh, hear more clearly from You. Pray that these, these would always be habits that would would be with us and uh, Father we just we want to we want to we want to go deeper with you we want to go farther with you we want our relationship with you to increase uh, we can't do that uh, unless you draw us and so Holy Spirit we ask that you would uh, you would continue to draw us to yourself and uh intercede for us and uh, speak, communicate our prayers uh, clearly from our heart to the heart of God. and um, Help us as we continue throughout the rest of this year because we need You. We need You, we need You, we need You. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here, being encouraged and, and speaking and communicating God's faithfulness. That I was encouraged, uh, and, uh, and, and I know that encouragement will, will take us farther into 2021. And uh, so thank you for your boldness. Uh, thank you for your sensitivity as we went through these last 21 days and uh, praying that God continues to meet with us and speak to us and guide us and direct us. Amen. If you have any prayer needs, physical, spiritual, emotional things, we would love to continue to pray and pray specifically for those things. So uh, if you have those things, please don't hesitate to, uh, to come on up and we'll take you before the Lord. God bless. Have a fantastic day.